So you've heard Webflow is cool and you're considering learning it. Well, on this video, I'm gonna give you the basic and gonna build this page in only 16 minutes. Let's do this. All right, let's get started. But before we jump into Webflow, I actually want to explain a quick concept that is super, super important before you dive into Webflow so that you understand what you're even doing within Webflow. So the concept is called the box model. And here's basically what I wanna show you. Everything on the web is actually boxes within boxes. And let me show you how it looks. So here's the Apple website. I'm gonna click, I'm on Chrome here, I'm gonna click inspect, which basically gonna show you the code for this website. So what you can see here on the top is called HTML, and that's the code for this. And you can see as I move through this, you actually see the boxes on this page. And it's basically just boxes nested within boxes. The button here, as you can see, is a box and it's called a button. That's the name of this box. And by giving it a, a style, a name, basically, that's what you see down here. That's the CSS. Basically, that's the style. The name defines how does it look like? So what's the font size? What's the background of this? Exactly how this button looks, because it's called a button. So this is in like 30 seconds, 70% of what you need to know about building for the web. It's basically boxes within boxes within boxes. These boxes have the name. And the name, the style basically defines how they look like and how they interact with one another. Now that you know this, let's jump right into Webflow. So the first thing that I wanna do here before I even start throwing things on the page is actually define the main, main box here. So as you can see, we have here body. That is the main box of the website selected. And I'm gonna give it a style so that we can define it. Basically what I wanna do is give it a background of black because the whole page is gonna be black and I'm gonna give it the basic kind of fonts so that the whole font is gonna inherit that font and gonna use that. So it's gonna be white and it's gonna be this specific font. So let's start with it. Um, on the right here, we have the styling panel, which basically means for this specific style, how is it gonna look like? Now, I'm not gonna give it, I'm just gonna click here and select the body tag because that's what we're styling right now. And I'm gonna scroll down into a background because basically I wanna choose like a black background. And you can see that we've changed uh, the background here because we're editing this box, the body. And the next thing I wanna do is in the typography section, I'm gonna choose white because I want white text. And I'm gonna choose uh, Montserrat font, I think. I don't know, let's start with that. All right, so. Let's get started. What do I have here? Basically, I have here two kind of sections and I'm not building this properly as I would if this would be a real website. I just wanna show you the main concepts here. So basically there's two things here. There's the navigation and there's the rest of the content. So let me just jump, throw in kind of like two, the, mas the, the basic uh, boxes are called div blocks. So I'm just gonna throw in two div blocks one and then two. The first one is gonna be the navigation and I'm gonna give it a name here. I'm gonna call it nav, just so that now I can style and refer to that style as we said. Now it's a box with a name so that we can give it a style. Now basically we have three things in it. We have this hamburger menu, the logo and then the search button. And I've went ahead and uploaded here into the assets panel, a bunch of assets. And so let's just throw them inside, right? Let's me, let me throw in the menu here and then I'm gonna throw in the logo and then I'm gonna throw in the search icon. Just throwing in three images into this box. Now, as you can see, they're not sized properly and they're just stacked one next to another from left to right, because that's the default on the web. We read from left to right, so that's how things are stacked. Now, one thing I wanna do is I want to make sure that they are you know, uh, distributed from left center to the right. And so the way that I'm gonna do this is by changing the layout here of the nav box from the default, which is called block, into something that's called a flex box. It's something super, super powerful. I'm not gonna dive super into this right now, but by choosing this, now I can change the justification of all the content that's in this box. So left, center, right, and we also have here 
space between, which basically means it's gonna just space the elements equally. And that's actually good, because that's one on the left, one in the center, and one in the right. Now, one thing that we know that we want is, and we can see it here, we want kind of equal spacing, right? From the top, from the bottom, from all the sides. So we're gonna go back here, we have this is called the box model, right? We talked about the boxes. So this is the space within the box and the space outside of the box. So let me just pull in, and I'm gonna pull in holding the option and shift key so that I can pull in from all sides at the same time. And I'm gonna choose 20 here. So now you can see we have 20 pixels on each side of this box kind of spacing out things evenly. So that's good. Now the only thing I wanna do is to change the sizing of this. So I'm gonna add names for all of these elements so that I can properly refer to them. I'm gonna call this uh, menu, I'm gonna call this logo, and I'm gonna call this search. And the only thing that I'm gonna change right now is actually the width of, so the size of this element. This one, let's turn it into 30 pixels. This one, let's see, 50 pixels. And this one, maybe 25 pixels. Again, I'm just doing this very, very fast so we can see. That's looks pretty much okay. Now, next thing that we have here. Now, for this box, one thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that it's not too wide. And you can see here that the text is actually, you know, not getting from edge to edge. And the reason is that because we have wide screens these days, we have to keep the content centered so that people don't have to kind of move their head from side to side. Um, so we're using something that's called container. But by container, basically what we mean is for this uh, box, let me call this container, container, container. Uh, we basically set a maximum width. So if we're on a very wide screen, we don't want it to be too wide. So let me put that at 1100 pixels. Um, just make sure that it's centered by clicking this center button. So now we have this element centered. Now we have basically two things here. We have this, um, let's start with this title, all new S class. So I'm gonna drop in a title or a heading as it's called here. So from the typography menu, from the add menu typography, I'm gonna add a heading and I'm gonna call this the all new S class, S class. And basically now we have a heading because it's a heading, it's already bold and kind of it already has some style, but that's definitely not the style that we want. So we're gonna edit this tag, H1 tag for the heading and we're gonna Let's start changing stuff here in the typography. Let's change the font to this. What's the name of the font? Common something. Uh, we're gonna make it normal, not bold. We're gonna make sure that it's centered. We're gonna make it, I don't know, a little bigger. And uh, also, let me look at this. Yeah, we want this to be all caps, all in upper capital letters. So we have here all caps. And that looks good. Now, the only thing is that the S class is way bigger than the rest of it. It's still one title um, and it's, it makes sense to use one element so that Google knows this is one title, but we do wanna give this S class a different style. So by selecting this, you'll see we have the brush icon here, which wraps it with another style. So this one, I'm gonna call this big. H1, H1 stands for the big heading. And I'm gonna make this really, really big. And also I don't want them to be on the same on the same line. I want this to take up a whole new line. So I'm gonna change the display here into block. Block means this takes the whole line from top to bottom. They're a little bit uh, too close to one another. So I'm also gonna add a top margin. And now this looks pretty good. Kind of how much, how I want it. All right, so we have the navigation, we have the container, within we have the H1. Now we want to bring in the image of the car. So let me just throw in the image of the car, actually from the assets panel. We're just gonna throw this in after the heading. And uh, yeah, boom, it's right actually on top of it. I didn't have to do anything. Uh, oh yeah, but because I, took up this, uh, because this big H1 is actually moving up with the margin, um, it's actually already on top of it. Now this happens because this is actually a PNG, so with a transparent background. So when it's on top of the text, 
it actually looks pretty good. So I don't even have to do anything. I thought I'll have to reposition. So what do we have to do right now? We have to create this three column grid here. Um, I'll do that by using an element here that's called the grid. That's a pretty powerful, pretty powerful element. I'm gonna put it after the image and I'm gonna edit it. I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna add a column because it's three columns. I don't need a second row, so I'm gonna delete this row. And basically we have now a three column grid. Now, basically you can see from the design, they actually all look the same. So we're gonna create one box and then we're gonna basically duplicate it three times. So let me throw in a div block into this grid. And of course, I'm gonna give it a name so I can refer to it. So I'm gonna call this, uh, let's say feature box, feature box. And in this feature box, let me throw in a title cause you know, we have some title here, for example, luxury. All right, let me copy that and put it here. Obviously it's not the style that we want. So I'm gonna go here and edit this style. I'm gonna change the font into something thin or light and maybe a little bit bigger. That looks all right. And below it, I'm gonna put in a little bit of a text block. Actually within this feature box, I'm gonna put it underneath it. Um, this text should probably be bigger. So I'm gonna give it a style and I'm gonna call this feature text. And I'm gonna make it maybe 18 pixels and I'm gonna make the line height a little bit bigger. All right. Now this looks all right. Let me duplicate this feature box three times. So now we have three columns here. Let's change the text pretty much so we can, it looks as if we've changed the text here. And the only thing that we have left is actually these lines. So, and we need a little bit more spacing here. So let's check the feature box and let's add a little bit of margin or padding from the inside of the box. Let's say 15 pixels from each side. Now the boxes are better, better spaced, I think. We'll actually probably add a little bit more. Now, remember that we said this is a box. So because this is a box, we can actually, if we scroll down all the way here, we can actually give the box a border. So in this case, we only want to give a border on the right side. So we're gonna give it one pixel, we're gonna make it white. And now we have, because these are all the same style, they're getting all the same, you know, features. So all of them got the, the line on the right, but actually we, do not want this last one. See the last one, we don't want it to have a line. So let's add this last box, only this last feature box. We're gonna add it an additional style to make it different. We're gonna call this last box. So it's getting all the properties from feature box, but some of the things are gonna be different. So we're gonna keep the spacing the same, but we're gonna remove this border. So. Now all the boxes have this white line, except for the last one. Now basically we can finish here, but let's just make it fancier. Let me add some kind of an interaction or animation just to make it a little bit fancier. Let's go here into the interaction panel on the right and let's add a page load animation. So we have triggers that the page triggers. One of them, if I'm gonna edit, is page load. And this is basically an animation or interaction that happens after the page starts loading or finishes loading. Let me add a new animation here and um, let's call this loading animation. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna make all of these elements appear nicely one after another. So let's start by actually saying, let's hide them and then show them when the page is load, when the page loads. So I'm gonna start by choosing the image and I'm gonna choose here, I can animate all of these different properties. I'm gonna choose opacity gonna turn this down into zero. I'm gonna trigger here something that's called set as initial state. So we're gonna start off um, from zero and then let me duplicate this element, duplicate this. And then when the page, is, when the page loads, we're gonna bring it back into a hundred. So this is what's going to happen. Now let's do this also for the feature boxes. So I'm gonna select this one and start by hiding it set as initial state, and then let's duplicate this. 
in this one, I want this to happen after, only after the car loads, this is going to show. So I'm gonna bring back the opacity. Let's trigger that. So now car shows and then this feature box show. Let's do this for these two as well. Start by hiding them, zero opacity as an initial state and then duplicating them and then bringing back after the feature box, animate into 100. Let's do this for the last one as well. Start with opacity of zero as an initial state, duplicate and bam, bring back into 100. Let's play this, boom, 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 boom. And now when we're loading this page, it's going to animate in. All right, so that was it. Of course, this was very, very, very fast. And of course, there's so much more depth into Webflow, but I wanted to show you what you can do really, really fast. If you're interested about learning more, check out the link in the description. We have, of course, a full-on course on Webflow where we go really deep. Hope to see you with us and see you on the next video. Bye-bye.